Storm played in a throwback game in Des Moines, but in three times at the plate, never managed to get on base. And I don't know about that uniform either. Chris Christie's rethinking a run for the White House. Sources tell NBC News. The will he or won't he buzz is everywhere. Whatever entertainment value Governor Christie might bring to the race, and certainly there will be tremendous entertainment value, especially if you like Don Rickles. The swimming pool looks a lot better until you jump right in. The water may not be quite as warm as you think. When somebody becomes very well known, those sort of superficial things become uh, non-issues. But at first blush, you know, what do they say? You only get one chance to make a first impression. He very cleverly and adeptly is able to turn it into sort of a populist type of strength. He says, like many Americans, I struggle with my weight. I want to bring in our company, Columbia professor Mark Lamont Hill and Republican strategist Doug Hyde. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. You know, Doug, all the columnists are writing about this. Eugene Robinson wrote about it. I mean, an anti-discrimination group is now getting in on it. Uh, is Chris Christie too big to be president? No, I don't think so. I think it makes for great headlines. We'll see things like Christie weighs in. Uh, Bill Crystal this weekend said that Chris Christie would make a big splash. Uh, but what I took away was when you tweeted asking for responses from your viewers, one person said that they think that perhaps showing an affinity with people who like Krispy Kreme donuts isn't a bad thing. And I grew up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where the original Krispy Kreme was. I think there's probably some truth in that. Yeah, let me read that one because we have it. It's from at Jazz Shaw. He writes, America is chunky. Uh, they can relate to somebody with an affinity for Krispy Kreme. There's another one. Uh, at Michael Genesis writes, as a leader, one should look the part and represent a standard that they are capable. Physical health is important. Mark, what do you think? Well, it shouldn't matter. I mean, there are a list of reasons to not want to vote for Chris Christie. Uh, his weight shouldn't be on that list. However, Americans don't want people who look like them. Yes, many Americans are overweight. Yes, many Americans have bad eating habits. But they don't want their president to look that way. They want a president who projects strength. So do you think in this media age that they have to look like they came out of central casting? Absolutely. I mean, look at Barack Obama. I mean, he, he, has a mat, he has matinee idol type of looks, you know. That helps, the fact that he's tall, the fact that he's thin. And empirical studies bear this out. People tend to vote for the taller candidate, the more attractive candidate, the thinner candidate. And Chris Christie likely won't be any of those things in the GOP race. I think he can win because the field is so bad, but the weight will definitely be a demerit. I don't know, Doug. Do you think all those people who are out of work, the millions of people who are out of work, they really care? The, is, is the bottom line just, can he get me a job? Yeah, I think so. With unemployment over 9%, that's what voters are going to focus on. But if this becomes an issue, certainly we'll see Saturday Night Live have a lot of fun with it should Chris Christie run. But we'd also see renewed scrutiny on whether or not President Obama smokes. And ultimately, having a ripper at Rutt's Hut, a big fried hot dog in Clifton, New Jersey, is a lot more popular than lighting up a camel. Yeah, but, but the difference is uh, Barack Obama can hide a cigarette smoking habit. Chris Christie can't hide his weight. You know, you, you, Even if you don't see him eating a, a six-foot-long sandwich, you can tell he just ate one looking at his body type, and that's what's going to by the American people. All right, let me talk about another big uh, uh, issue article that came out this weekend that Rick Carey's Rick Perry's hunting camp uh, was named using a racial epithet. It's had the n-word in it. Um, he says that name is offensive. It was painted over in the 80s, but this is what Herman Cain had to say about that. That is on a more vile, negative word than the N-word, and for him to leave it there as long as he did before I hear that they finally painted over it, over it, it's just plain insensitive to a lot of black people in this country. There are some questions about exactly how long it was actually up there, but is this going to be an issue, do you think? Well, not, not for the GOP base. It may even win them a few votes, but I think... Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, Come I'm, on, I'm, I'm, Mark. I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek. I, I do think, though, that this speaks to Rick Perry's uh, difficulties getting winning the nominations, that the longer he's out there, the more things emerge about him. I think this is actually going to hurt him uh, in the long run. I actually think Rick Perry has some explaining to do, and I don't think it's enough to say it was painted over a long time ago. I think this speaks to the core of who he is. And, Doug, I do think, yeah, obviously, uh, it's coming at a time when his star has been falling, frankly. Yeah, no question. There are certainly some questions that need to be answered, some questions that need to be answered about the story itself from the Washington Post. But as a Republican, you know, I look back the last two years, we had a black chairman. We've really increased um, our <laughs> outreach with um, African Americans. Tim Scott uh, from South Carolina, Alan West from Florida. We've got a lot more work to do as Republicans, but we're going to keep doing that. You know, but talking about Chris Christie, Mark, I I'm wondering if, you know, what we, what we just heard what is true. You know, I, I thought John McCain, you know, it's a little different when you actually dive into the pool. Um, um, is it easy to be in love with a candidate 
and then they get into the race. Absolutely. Remember, remember Fred Thompson four years ago? I mean, he was the rage. They said, oh, he's going to be a short Rudy Giuliani. Winner. Rudy Giuliani, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a list of people of who them. look great. The difference with Chris Christie, though, is the number one, the pool is bad. And so I actually think that uh, his competition is thin, but also, no pun intended. But also, I think that Chris Christie actually has the conservative bona fides to beat out Mitt Romney. I think he's, much, he's, seen, he's seen as much more moderate than Rick Perry, much more normal, much more sane than Michelle Bachman. I mean, I think there are real reasons to vote for Chris Christie. He's likable. He's personable. He does well in debates. I think Chris Christie could win despite his weight, although, again, it will be an issue. Is it late? Is it too late, Doug? I mean, how much? what's the disadvantage? Let's say he gets in uh, at the end of the week. What's, what disadvantages he had already? Are all the good people already taken? Are, are the money people already committed? Well, that's it. It's exactly organization. It's organization on the ground in South Carolina, Nevada, Iowa, New Hampshire. Uh, we haven't seen that work going on with Christie yet. Up uh, the perfect candidates, the one who hasn't announced, because then there's nothing to campaign against yet. But right now, it's like Elvis said, it's now or never. It may not be too late yet, but we're getting to that we're point. There. All right. Thank you so much, Doug. Hi, Mark Lamont Hill. We appreciate it. Uh, we want to take you live to Perugia, Italy. You know, we are waiting now for a verdict to